This is the Media Mark Weather Show. Let's take a look at some viewer sent in photos. First one through uh, Ryan Crawford here. Take a look at this roll cloud. This was all over the news recently. Roll cloud rolling over Texas. These are usually uh, resulting in Australia, but we actually got one that moved across Texas the other day. So thank you, Ryan, for bringing that to my attention. And uh, it was really uh, a sight to behold because these are not really, uh, well, they happen in Texas, but they're not uh, more or less native to Texas. They, they're they very well known in Australia. So very nice. It's a very beautiful cloud structure. It just, it's exactly how it's described. It's a roll cloud. And it rolls from whatever direction, and it moves at a pretty good clip. And uh, very nice. Uh, let's take a look at, all my photos today are from Texas. If we take a look at the Texas uh, photos here from Linden, Texas, where Lucas and Courtney are. First couple photos from uh, Courtney here. Take a look. We see a bird peeking its way through the leaves this time of year. Still very moss of wildlife. They're not getting into winter like the northern part of the United States. And as we progress through these photos, you see some very nice foliage still on the trees. And, of course, up north, they've either turned color or they've fallen to the ground, but not in Linden. Look at this. And uh, more sky photos here from Lucas. Take a look at some of these photos. And you get into some really nice colors with some of these sunsets that uh, he captured the other night. Very nice reds and oranges, even some pinks in there. Rare varieties of colors with this uh, lower sun angle this time of year. So very nice. You get those nicer sunsets this time of year simply because the sun is more in the, the southern hemisphere. It has more atmosphere to travel to go to the northern hemisphere and that light to reach through the atmosphere to the ground. So very nice. Both uh, Ryan Crawford for that roll cloud over Texas and Lucas D from Linden, Texas. Those nice photos there. Let's take a look at some precipitation amounts. I want to draw your attention to the Pacific Northwest up here. This is where we'll be getting into some uh, precipitation on the order of two, maybe as much as five inches, mainly along the coast towards Eureka, up towards uh, the Navarro area and extending up towards of course, it's all going to be west of Portland, west of Seattle for the most part. And uh, those systems will continue to parade into the Pacific Northwest. We take a look back east here, mainly the central states. We'll have a return flow of Gulf moisture here. But it's here in the Mississippi River Valley up to the Great Lakes. We'll see a little bit of a shot of precipitation, maybe a quarter to half an inch through the weekend. But not much by any stretch of the imagination. Heading on into... Let's take a look at the scenario outlook here. I'm not looking at any major large scale systems. Let's take a look at Wednesday into Thursday here. The Wednesday Thursday map looking very interesting here across the northern plains. We'll get some of those systems diving down from the upper Midwest and central Canada. Keeping things showery and even some mixed precipitation with some snowfall as well. No major significant snow accumulations, mainly confined to the mountains. We head up back east here, we get a little bit of a return flow of moisture here. Like I said, out of the Gulf of Mexico, heading on up to the northeast, conditions remain mostly clear. Heading on into Friday and Saturday, TGIF and Saturday as well, the system really starts to dive southward here. And we have this low couplet here in the Ohio Valley. I want to draw your attention to right up here, this low couplet. It will be associated with overrunning precipitation across Pennsylvania and New York State. I'm not looking for anything heavy, but something, some people could be getting some wintry precipitation. Nothing significant, but it's something to watch for. And that system will move further up into New England and the Canadian Maritimes by later on in Saturday and Sunday. But I'm not looking at this to organize into any major coastal system for that matter. If we take a look at those temperatures, let's look at those temperatures. We'll be starting to cool down here in the northeast from what we had this weekend. Here in the southern plains, this is in the central plains, we start to warm things up more into the 60s and even some 70s here. 70s is pretty much the rule along the Gulf Coast. Heading on up to the eastern United States, heading on to Thursday. Fr Friday and Saturday's temperatures, we start to pump some warmer conditions up. Not as warm as last weekend, but that will quickly come to an end towards the weekend as we get that cold front moving through Friday night for many locations in the northeast. And as I said, that low couplet could provide some overrunning precipitation north of the warm front in Pennsylvania and upstate New York and portions of southern New England. So we'll watch for that. The precipitation amounts will be mainly dependent on elevation as well as how much cool air gets trapped in the valleys. 
not looking at any major snow or ice, but it could have some light drizzle, light freezing drizzle, light snowflakes mixing in at times. It'll be interesting for this time of year. Now next week I've received questions already about a possible Thanksgiving storm. As I said, it's too well, much too early to tell that. And being that uh, the last time the Euro model indicated a very good healthy coastal system, it was trying to produce a system, a low pressure system out of no energy that was there along the coast. This was a couple weeks ago. The GFS held tough and kept the, any systems from developing. So at this time, I'm going to continue to analyze the models, but at this time, I'm only expecting light Alberta style clipper systems to stretch and traverse across much of the upper Midwest into the Northeast. They will have that trough in place next week for Thanksgiving week, and we'll get those snow, you know, proverbial snow showers and lake effect snow showers as well. And nothing major at this time expected, but I will let you know if anything changes with the models. That's going to do it here at MediaMark. Don't forget to like me on Facebook at MediaMark. Subscribe to me on YouTube at MediaMark.com. Here's a five-day outlook for my hometown viewers in the Susquehanna region of New York and the Susquehanna region of Northeast Pennsylvania. Look at these numbers here. We cool it back down. We're still above normal this time of year, mid to high 40s, heading on through Wednesday and Thursday. Mostly clear for the most part, increasing cloudiness on Thursday and Friday, Saturday. That's where we start to get into more of a precipitation type event. I have mixed precipitation indicated here for Saturday because temperatures will be marginal in the mid to high 30s for highs on Saturday. So we'll have to watch for the possibility some mixed precipitation. However, I don't expect your travel plans to become too dangerous. So check back often, but I think it will be all right. We'll just have that overrunning precipitation and uh, no major accumulations. Saturday night could be a little bit more tricky. Heading on into Sunday, we get those scattered snow showers and possible lake effect snow showers behind that main system. That's going to do it here at Meteomark.